It's March the 2nd, 2020, 7.30 p.m. I call this regular meeting with council to order. I uh, just note that Councilor Delorier will be attending by Zoom and uh, he will be about 15 minutes late. Everybody that we have participating by video, just make sure you have your uh, devices on mute and we will call on you or you can raise your hand if it's by video uh, when the time comes. Result of the agenda for the March 2nd, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor Delorier, or sorry, Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the minutes of February 16, 2021, regular council meeting, February 23rd, 2021, Committee of the Whole meeting, and the February 25th, 2021, special meeting be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving on to 4.1. Result that this regular council meeting be closed and further that of public hearing for bylaw number 1, 2021, be called to order at 7.32, moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I call this hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against bylaw number 1, 2021, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a rate for the collection of residential waste and recycling material as a special service for the town of Swan River for the year 2021. I request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and their civic addresses. Um, because of uh, COVID restrictions that are in place, we had to, uh, what we did was to allow for people to speak on this hearing that they could do so by invitation uh, or by uh, video or by audio. So we do have two people that are uh, attending tonight. One is uh, Ms. Helen Waldner and the second is Mr. Paul Watts. Um, just remember to please keep your comments to the subject, to the item that we're speaking on. And I give you approximately 10 minutes to speak if you have questions, uh, ask those questions that we could uh, answer them in our best ability. If we can't, we will get back to you tomorrow. Um, Ms. Walder was on the line first, so I'm going to let Ms. Walder go first. And then Mr. Watts. So go ahead, Ms. Walder. I have nothing to ask or say right at the moment, so... Okay. Uh, Mr. Watts. Yes, uh, I just got a few things. Uh, these different uh, taxes, I call them, that uh, we had on water and sewage and now we have on uh, uh, garbage pickup and uh, recyclable, used to be uh, in the general taxes. And now you people are breaking it down and breaking it down and making it another source of uh, taxes. Now our general taxes several years ago went up 19% in two years. I got the figures for that on that fourplex apartment. And the water, you know, went up 40%. Now, what I'm trying to uh, get across, I've had apartment open for several months now. One was uh, gone past a year and two months. Now that proposed $706 for that uh, 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 recyclable and garbage. When you got open apartments like that, how can you be charged the full amount as though they are full? Because there's no ta uh, garbage to pick up, there's no recyclable to pick up, and there's three apartments out of the four that were empty from the 1st of January, a uh, year gone by, till June, and I got one apartment, 
that was empty since the 1st of January till now, and it's still empty. Now, what's going to happen in that case? Is it going to be policed properly that uh, we aren't going to be getting uh, charged for something that we don't uh, yet? And uh, oh, just a few items here. Uh, Mr. Watts, let's stick to that, because I, I think that's your first question as far as um, the empty dwelling uh, with multi-dwelling uh, units. I don't know, uh, maybe, if I put you on the spot, maybe answer that question. The administration is here to answer that. Right, so all apartment buildings are included as residential, so it's it's not like commercial or if you don't use the service, uh, you don't get taxed. It is, it is considered residential, therefore, there, to put it bluntly, there is no choice. You, you have to pay that cost. Okay, so then go on to your next question, Mr. Watts. Well, that was it. Like, uh, so I'll be paying this tax on a service that isn't being used. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, just like if somebody it, owned a house in a residential area that is that is uh, unoccupied, they would still be charged this service tax. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> go on to your next question if you have. Well, there's nothing else. I just, uh, I can't believe that uh, usually you get something for money you pay for. When you go for to the store to buy bananas, you pay the price and you get bananas. This, I, I'm going to the store and I'm paying for something that I don't get in return. I don't understand your logics to that. Whoever... Whoever brought that up should uh, should not be in that position to do so again. Well, not not trying to get into too much, but there are a lot of things that some don't receive. And education is one thing that we all have to pay taxes on. So I don't want to go down that road. But but anyway, if you have no other further questions, I'll go to uh, uh, Miss uh, Waldner. Go ahead. No, no comment. Okay. So then our other. Uh, uh, Representation is uh, Mr. Thomas. Go ahead. Mr. Thomas. Thomas, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, well, you're trying to figure that out. Uh, Mr. Hinkleman, are you uh, uh, here to speak on the, uh, by, the the hearing as well? No, I'm not. Just curious. Okay, thank you. Marty, did you get back on there? Yeah, I'm, I'm back on. Yeah, I have no questions at this point. James Gibbons has a few questions. Ms. But go ahead on Mr. On Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas didn't have anything. So, uh, Mr. Wigley. Yeah, thank you. Um, I know I'm doing a bit of a presentation in regards to something else, but I did register to be a part of this as well. Um, twofold, one, uh, being new to living in Swan River. Um, but two, we own, um, my job is executive director for Canadian Mental Health Association, Parkland and the Paw region. And we own two apartment complexes here in Swan River called the Echo Apartments. Um, so it is my understanding then that those two complexes would fit under the 10 dwelling unit plus or because both are, both have more than 10 units. Do you, do you have dumpsters at those locations? Yes, we do. So that was my next question. Are we are we underneath this tax or are we paying what we're currently paying, yeah, which is uh, quarterly? You, you're under the commercial of the uh, dumpsters, not under this. Okay. In, so even though they're residential buildings? That's right. In your echo uh, apartment buildings, yes. Okay. It, then that basically answers the question that I was going to have uh, pertaining to this. So. Okay, thank you. Thank I, you. Councilor White had something. 
And just a comment for, for Mr. Watts, I think it's appropriate, sir, that if you if you want elaboration, I'm sure Mr. Poole, our CAO, would let you sit down in his office sometime and go over the good, the bad, and the ugly about that concept, because I'm sure there are two sides, and I would encourage you, sir, to come and uh, uh, talk to uh, Mr. Poole. Absolutely, and that goes for anybody listening. If you have any questions that maybe you don't want to ask at the public hearing, uh, you can always contact my office and we will find your answers. Okay, so uh, I hear you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Watts, did you catch that? Yes, I did. Okay, so again, if anybody uh, wants or is looking for any further explanation or understanding on, on this current bylaw, which is basically a renewal of, of the bylaw that we had in the past. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, don't feel uh, uh, afraid to come in to see Mr. Poole or administration for any further information or advice or, or explanations. So if there's no other further, um, oh, Councillor Gray, sorry. Yes, Your Worship. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, and you know, this is a renewal, obviously, of an existing bylaw. But I'm wondering why, for people who actually um, have rental properties, which is a, a form of commercial enterprise, why we couldn't um, create an, um, a section that allows them to opt out of residential and to be considered commercial? Is there any reason we couldn't do that? I guess that I don't know if we can get into that tonight, but I guess we could talk about that at a cow meeting, perhaps, and there might be some possibilities there. Well, I recognize it's only first reading. I'm just I was just wondering if there was some technical reason we couldn't, because it seems to me that would be the that might be an answer. There, there may be, but I think that just for the sake of a hearing, we should uh, leave that until we can have a discussion about that. Yeah, I would have to do more research and confer with our, our chief financial officer on that. Uh, on that sort of did, did you catch that, Councillor Gray? I, I did, and I, I, I you know, I, first reading is tonight. The appropriate time to discuss amendments is between, for, uh, you know, is sometime after first or sometime after second reading. So I, I, I have no problem with it going to a committee of the whole meeting following first reading this evening. I just think that that's a, something we should explore before we move it to third reading. Okay, and that's fair. Um, this is what the hearing is all about, to learn from that and, and if there's any uh, possibilities of making changes to it. So administration will then look into that and it will talk to the, uh, the CFO to see what options that we may have with that. Thank you for bringing that up, Councilor Gray. Anything further? So if there's none, yeah, can I just point out there are some more people that have joined? I'm not sure if they want to speak or not. Uh, we have some that's with the business consortium group, so I believe that all that register has, unless I'm wrong. I hear none. So upon hearing all persons present, I adjourn this hearing. Result of the public hearing on bylaw number one, 2021, be closed and further the regular council meeting resume at 7.44. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Moving on then to number 4.3, we have the business consortium group uh, with us tonight to make presentation on uh, basically what they've been up to and uh, letting us uh, hear uh, all the good things about uh, their organization. So I just want to remind everybody here that's in on that. Um, I guess I'm the only one maybe that can maybe see uh, who is in on the group uh, or who may be raising their hand. But I'll let Mr. Armstrong kind of start it off from here because I believe that you are the chair. and. Um, and maybe then you can kind of tell us in what order who's going to speak. Uh, just remember, try to keep things as, as light as we can. Obviously, try to get as much information as we can hear is what we need. 
and then we can kind of go from there. But we do have other things on our agenda, so we don't want to take up too, too much time. But uh, at the same time, we do need to hear what you all have to say. So keep it somewhat condensed, I guess I can say. So, so Mr. Armstrong, I'll uh, let you go from here, and uh, maybe you can um, introduce who you have with you here tonight, and then perhaps the order will go from there. Good evening, everybody. Um, again, my name is Derek Armstrong, and uh, I'm going to be just opening up just uh, for a few minutes with respect to giving a little bit of uh, history on the SUBC and uh, where we go from there. Uh, we'll be just to kind of explain a little bit of the, the relationship with the subcommittees and how they're functioning. And then what we did, and uh, Mr. Mayor, we had discussed uh, previously with uh, the CAO uh, five minutes per subcommittee just to give an abbreviation version of their function and the results thus far. Uh, however, just prior to that, I would turn the uh, the discussion over to Mr. Wintoni, who would explain uh, the task force function and where the subcommittees fit into that. We're going to be speaking with uh, a few of the uh, subcommittee chairs tonight, uh, Mr. Wigley, uh, Mr. Dick, uh, and of course, uh, Jessica Lacasse, uh, and uh, and Stacy, uh, and Mr. S Mr. Hansen will uh, obviously be speaking a little bit on the restorative justice. With that being being said, just before I, I begin, I want to take a moment and uh, thank all the partners that we've had since the onset of this uh, almost three years ago now. We've made some great inroads, uh, uh, had a lot of success with respect to uh, the three uh, pillars of the organization. As we started, we've kept it apolitical and we've dealt with issues of the day. Uh, and that is involved in training, policy and systems development, inclusive of safety and security within the environment as well. So we're very happy with uh, the, the progress that we've made. Council has been a supporter of that and we appreciate that uh, we've had a lot of support uh, from council members during the, the course of the uh, the uh, programs and their development and from the start of the SVBC Mr. Wintoni and Mr. White uh, Mr. Morial uh, Mr. Morial also uh, had originally taken on the, the COP program as well with Mr. Henson we appreciate all, all the work that's been done thus far so there's been a lot of significant change now with that being said uh, before I turn it over to Mr. Wintoni I just want to explain to those that aren't aware what the the consortium is it's a group of uh, individuals within the community we have 104 registrants within and uh, that is everything from chamber to business to uh, uh, the town to rms to uh, healthcare, multiple facets of healthcare, education um, adult learning uh, all the way through to multiple businesses and so the idea of it is to make sure that we uh, sustain uh, a community uh, that is growth growthful and, and vibrant and purposeful and uh, with that being said uh, the task force itself uh, was developed to come underneath that and begin dealing with some of the significant issues that were at the core of some of the, the uh, concerns that were within our community. And so basically what we've done is we've created the SVBC or the consortium as the, uh, the uh, grandparent. The task force, uh, which answers to the consortium, is that of the parent and then the subcommittees are those of the children. And the idea, again, is to make sure that we're addressing all functional abilities and specific uh, community related issues so uh, along with uh, the other ones and I the, the committees themselves uh, I also want to recognize mr. Wigley he's going to be speaking tonight too so we've got our four our four speakers and we're going to try and keep everything to five minutes per to make sure that everybody is able to uh, to present uh, a little bit of the information that they've been dealing with it's going to be only a snapshot of what we've been doing so with that being said I'm going to turn it over to mr. Mantoni to speak just for a moment on the task force Thank you, Mr. Armstrong, and uh, of course, the business consortium that has been the, the parent, the task force, has been the subcommittee of the business consortium. So the task force uh, was implemented uh, by a group of volunteers, uh, Mr. Armstrong, uh, Ms. Stacy Rindle, Mrs. Naomi, and I forgot her, Griffith, there we go, I want to call her uh, by her previous name, and Mr. Reed Minish, and those folks came together and, and we were looking at the issues that uh, existed in our community and decided that we should um, take some action in bringing the, all of the programs that are offered within the community um, in a cohesive manner to create some success. So that's how the task force was um, developed the task force met several times over several months 
um, evaluated all the opportunities or all the options that were available in, te in the community and streamlined it into um, what that looked like and focused on areas of gaps or um, places that did need more more help to rise up to the challenge to, to take care of the needs within our community. So out of that subcommittee, there were four future subcommittees that were developed out of that one. So under the task force, we have four subcommittees, uh, which is uh, under, under one roof, Swan River Basic Needs, um, and I will let the chairs talk about each one of those. Um, second Chance Employment, Tier 1 Housing, and Restorative Justice. So Swan River Basic Needs Under One Roof is addressing the uh, transient population and the needs that they have to, uh, and, the, and their needs that come with that. And that is, um, I don't see Jessica on here today. So Ms., maybe perhaps Mr. Armstrong, you can speak to that one if you're able, or uh, James I know and Jack as well are very familiar. So we can have one of you speak on her behalf. Um, second chance uh, employment, addressing the uh, uh, employment issues that we have, and that is uh, um, uh, chair, interim chair, Mr. Dick, who will speak on that one. Uh, tier one housing to address housing needs, uh, that is chair uh, James Wigley, and restorative justice um, to talk about um, uh, issues related to justice and crime prevention, things like that. That is uh, Sergeant Steve Henson and Miss Stacy Grindle, who is on the line as well. So I think I, that's kind of my timeline to speak. Uh, I can't answer any other questions, um, but I will give the opportunity to my wonderful chairs who have done such an immense amount of work in their uh, in their specific areas. So let's start with um, Chair Interim Chair. Uh, Jack Dick with Second Chance Employment. Mr. Dick, if you could give your five minute uh, or so presentation. <laughs> you guys are wishful thinkers. Uh, you're talking to a bunch of government people and uh, people who do who talk for a living. So can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, councillors, guests. Uh, my name is Jack Dick. Uh, I work for Skills and Employment Partnerships, Manitoba Economic Development and Training right here in Swan River. Um, and uh, I am the interim chair of uh, Second Chance Employment. Um, interim primarily because um, it's felt that uh, the agencies may be coming to our department for some funding uh, at some point in time. And so for me to, to act as chair would be seen as uh, somewhat of a conflict. So um, uh, this will be my last uh, official duty as uh, the chair of this committee. Um, not, uh, not uh, that, that's not necessarily my desire, but it is something that, uh, that is prudent. Um, so I thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to share tonight. This is, this is a pretty exciting time, I think, in our community, and, and I'm very, very pleased to be a part of it. Um, business Consortium, I'm going to read most of what I uh, want to say just to keep it, uh, keep it on task. Uh, business Consortium has identified four areas of need within the multi-barriered client within our local community. The category that we have been asked to address this evening has been titled Second Chance Employment. Recognizing that many of the individuals identified by the Business Consortium face significant barriers to employment, we have been tasked to examine areas of development and employment preparation in opening doors to employment. Some examples of these barriers might be a criminal record, addictions, uh, lack of driver's license, lack of grade 12, uh, family and housing issues, etc. The initial idea was to possibly develop a bricks and mortar facility that could access raw materials from within the community and that would provide both economic benefits for the community as well as employment opportunities for this client group. Uh, so in other words, um, a factory, a plant, um, something that would make money that we could use uh, raw materials from the, the uh, community. Straw board plant, you know, you have it. Second Chance Group have met twice to begin uh, developing strategy, strategies to address these needs. Early on, we as practitioners realized that many of these individuals were not even close to being employable, and so perhaps a facility would not be the complete answer. 
We also recognize that many of the resources for these individuals already exist within our community. The challenge has now become to tweak these resources to make them more accessible and more effective in working with this client group. Also, rather than bricks and mortar facility, we have decided to focus in on accessing our local employment resource more fully. Many of our local employers are willing to work with these clientele if they are aware of more available supports available. Uh, the bricks and mortar would still be a continuing goal, perhaps being more of a goal for the future. And as you're aware, RISE continues to work on this option as they have been in the past. Currently, regarding the employment preparation idea, the Albert Chartrand Friendship Centre has been offering life skills focused training for many years. This year, they hope to expand this program to assist more effectively this client base through its Succeed programming. Currently, the Friendship Centre has added more divisions that will further assist this clientele. And examples of that are uh, that they have taken over management of manageable housing units, uh, they are expanding daycare facilities and so on. And so both of these are examples where um, work experience hosts uh, can be accessed and or opportunities for clients to access long-term self-sustaining employment. I should also mention, uh, this is a little bit of a plug for the Town of Swan River, I should also mention that currently the Town of Swan River Recreation Department acts as the contract holder for the Parks and Recreation Work Crew, and the town itself holds the contract for Swan Valley Employment and Training. Both of these projects are working at expanding their roles to assist this identified client as well. So, in conclusion, Second Chance Employment has taken a bit of a detour to enhance existing programs and services with the support of the consortium, rather than moving into a business development model. We feel that by doing this, we will more so be able to meet the current needs more readily. And having said this, the business model will still exist as a priority. However, it will be a more long-term future project. I want to thank you for allowing us this time to present to Council and for pro providing support to these initiatives. Please feel free to ask for clarification or to provide additional ideas for the committee. Thank you. That was pretty quick, sorry. Well, well done, Mr. Dick, thank you. And just to sum that up in uh, a couple quick words, it's a, um, a two-prong approach, as Mr. Dick indicated. Um, one on the, on the education and the second being an economic development driver for our community as well. So uh, a, a two-prong approach that are, they are working very hard um, in, in establishing and, and bringing all those resources into one place. So I th uh, Mr. Armstrong, before I go on to the next group, did you have something to add there? I do. I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, mention, and I apologize. Uh, we received word that uh, Naomi is unable to attend tonight, and Rick Wolchuk just contacted me. He's tied up uh, in uh, legislative uh, business this evening and cannot make the call. So my apologies. They were to have been part of it as well. Thank you for that. Uh, moving on to... Um did we want to let's move on to the swan river basic needs the under one roof this was led by chair uh, jessica lacasse um, mr armstrong did you want to speak on that behalf or did you want someone else to take that um, I, I think probably uh, more prudent if mr wiggler or mr dick spoke to it uh, i know they'd participated to some degree with it all right uh, uh james mr wiggly would you like to speak a little bit otherwise i can take on that initiative as well, but I think that you might have a little more information. You know, I, I'm, I apologize. I'm very familiar with the Dauphin uh, under one roof as we're quite involved in that as CMHA. Uh, however, I haven't actually attended a meeting here. So I think if Jack can speak to this, I, he would be much better at that. Thank you. Thanks, James. Go ahead, Jack. Okay, so uh, just to kind of um, explain, I guess, a little bit under one roof and Dauphin, and James, maybe you can help me with this one, but uh, the the uh, idea is that a lot of um, a lot of our um, multi barrier clients uh, are just simply unable to um, access services, government services, or other services uh, during regular office hours or at whatever times. And so, in Dauphin, a group has been established where they have uh, had 
uh, regular times, uh, one evening, and I'm not, not, I can't remember how often, but once a month or so, uh, where uh, government folks uh, or people representing certain departments, whatever, uh, whenever whatever the need happens to be, uh, will attend uh, these uh, these evenings. So that people, let's say, for example, there, there will be computer access available, there will be uh, phone available, uh, various things like that. So a lot of our, our folks, multi-barrier folks, don't have the ability to um, pursue identification. And so maybe there'll be a government person, a representative one particular night that would be able to help them with that. That's a little bit of a snapshot. And James, after, maybe you can broaden that if you want. Um, so what we're looking at, um, there has been a, a local entrepreneur that's purchased a property in downtown Swan River. Uh, and uh, we're looking at partnering with Sean Charlebois. Uh, Sean has purchased the old um, um, Valley Cabs building kind of right out the back door of um, Pizza Place. Uh, and he is looking at um, doing a drop-in uh, center uh, and he's gonna be offering some other things. But what we have done is, is uh, we're entering into an agreement with uh, Mr. Charlebois, and we're going to be um, partnering with him, not on the same nights that he'll be using it, but on on uh, opposing nights. And uh, we're going to be providing similar services that I just described that Under One Roof does. Um, so in other words, you know, again, if um, uh, we're gonna have uh, computer Wi-Fi access, uh, telephones, washrooms available, um, various things like that. And then um, if a person, let's say, for example, needs to come in and apply for, uh, maybe they need to apply for income assistance, maybe they need to apply for um, employment insurance, maybe they need to apply for employment itself. Uh, so that would all be available there. It will be staffed by two um, people generally. It's not a very big area, so uh, we're trying to keep that part of things down. Um, and uh, this this initiative, I should also say, is is one that the interagency uh, has uh, kind of taken on as its own child, if you will, uh, project, if you will. Um, and uh, so, I'm very very excited to be able to bring, in a sense, the services to the client, maybe rather than making the client come to the service, which maybe they can't do uh, for whatever reasons it might be. Uh, so a multitude of, of agencies would be involved, um, Addictions Foundation of Manitoba, uh, James's organization, CMHA, could be involved, um, uh, probation services, uh, RCMP with Steve, uh, and various other organizations as well on you know certain nights. So example being um, Tuesday the 24th, for example, might be uh, identification application night. So if you need your ID, that would be the night for you to attend. That's kind of a snapshot, and maybe the others can add a little bit more to that too, if they like. And yeah, I so I mentioned that Charlene Gluck is also part of that, and Charlene's part of the Community Features Park Band, who has been closely, closely uh, associated with this group within Dauphin and has a ton of knowledge and um, is sort of the, our head figure that we're gathering that information from, and she's sharing with us, just been wonderful with us. So I went to give her a cheers. Thank you. Yeah, and just to speak uh, briefly about um, the Under One Roof and Dolphin. So it actually, like, um, so it started off as a hot meal program on Monday nights, and they received some uh, grant funding to do that. And then from there, they started bringing in services to be available to individuals who were coming to access that hot meal uh, so that if they so chose, they could access the services that they may be interested in. So it was a, it was a no. It was trying to limit the barriers and take away um, the stigma of accessing services at the actual location of those services, as well as um, kind of take away the pressure of accessing those services. So truly these services are there if somebody wants to access there is no pressure to do so uh, but a hot meal is served um, and so if somebody wants to come and, and eat and leave they're welcome to do that if somebody wants to come eat stay and chat they're welcome to do that and so forth um, in Dauphin at this point so Mondays they're still doing um, their hot meal uh, nights with services and then on Wednesdays they're doing coffee services so they're offering uh, coffee and muffins or dainties of some sort and services again on Wednesdays so they've actually grown it to be twice a week um, uh, program and it, it's really done quite a bit of uh, good in the Dauphin community and brought a lot of positivity uh, to working with uh, individuals that may have trouble accessing services regularly. 
Thank you, Mr. Wigley. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you, Jack. Just to sum that up a little bit um, in terms of the basic needs, there is already that group in the community, the Swan River Basic Needs, um, that will be playing on this on this role, offering those ba basic needs, tearing down the, the barriers, the stigmas, as, as Mr. Wigley indicated. Um, as well, it's an opportunity for local uh, organizations that simply want to help but don't want to be in charge. Um, so this is a group that they can reach out to. For example, it could be a, um, a church group who just wants to make soup and sandwiches for someone um, who want to do that good deed but don't know where to go or how to reach out or how to provide that service. This is the group that they would approach and be able to coordinate with that and do their good deed um, with somebody else coordinating those efforts. So a, a good, good opportunity for many different organizations within the community to come together. Um, moving on, just because we, I am looking at the clock as well, not to rush anybody, but moving on to um, Tier 1 housing. Uh, Mr. Wigley, this is your, your department. Um, take it away, and if there is anything that we miss, we'll catch it up. Perfect. Thank you. I'll try and be as brief as uh, and quick as possible while still trying to give as much information here. Um, so yeah, we formed uh, one of the pillars of the or one of the focuses of the task force being tier one housing. And just to give some background on that, as some might not be uh, familiar with what we mean by tier one, we typically we look at housing as a tiered um, kind of diagram, if you will. So in Swan River, currently, we feel we have tier two, uh, which would be very similar to what our echoes would be. So uh, programmed housing, yet still independent living. So individual who has um, or who is already on the course of recovery, be it from uh, substance challenges or mental health challenges, and um, can live independently, but still requires some education and, and skill building uh, for life skills and rental skills. And then from there, tier three, which would be like our private landlord or private residents um, within the communities. So being, you know, doing this for a number of years as far as CMHA goes and, and lots of other uh, great uh, agencies and organizations and groups around the community as well. Um, there's always been a fairly large gap in our area and that is tier one. So for housing for the individual that does not have uh, living skills or daily living skills, rental skills, you know, uh, does not have the skill set to independently live on their own. Um, I also want to just mention that we have invited and they continue to be a part of our group, the Concerned Citizens Association for North Parkland. So Anna Fullerton and Amy Shaw are both um, sitting around our table and are bringing a ton of great information, knowledge and experience from all the amazing work that they've been doing over the last um, few years or many years there uh, with their group as well. So we really have uh, combined quite a good amount of resources from this community to have this discussion and take a look at the opportunities that exist. Um, so from our discussions that we've had to date, it's it's apparent to those sitting around the table and from doing some needs assessment across the community with uh, individuals that the tier one housing that we're discussing would have more of a focus on substance use challenges than mental health. Um, from doing a survey across the community, from doing some needs assessment work, it was determined that with the, um, the current echoes that stand, we have quite a few uh, resource for housing for those living with mental health challenges. However, we continue to hit roadblocks and barriers for those that are experienced substance use challenges. So that is kind of the focus of our group right now is looking at housing for individuals who are currently using substances and uh, experiencing challenges from that use. So we also have invited to the table uh, harm reduction and uh, we'll be reaching out here and inviting um, addiction services as well as mental health services, community mental health services, I should say, uh, through Prairie Mountain Health to be a part of the, uh, this committee as well. Um, the other piece that we've been discussing around our table is the access of services uh, too, because we feel in order for this type of housing to be 
effective and and work as you know we kind of feel it, it needs to and from speaking to others they feel it needs to um, there needs to be services involved which means that there needs to be services offered outside of this housing there needs to be programming that's offered within this housing um, we can't just have a housing where you know anyone can do whatever they want at any time um, because we've experienced that as a community and, and it doesn't work um, we need to have housing where we're truly meeting the individual where they're at on their own path of recovery um, or their own um, current uh, behaviors and choices and we need to ensure that the housing is built in a way that individuals can continue to um, experience or express the, their choices and, and behaviors and um, and through their uh, path of recovery and, and not become evicted or lose their housing because they break rules that typically they would lose housing for in other aspects in our, in our community. Um, so to do that properly, again, like I said, there needs to be programming and there needs to be services offered. So this, this idea is fairly complex. Um, this is a, a, by far a marathon, it's not a race. Um, and I say that because this type of concept to do it well and do it properly is gonna take time. Um, we're not gonna be looking at building something this spring. Um, and it's unfortunate because our community could really use it right now. But again, we need to be cautious in our approach to this to ensure that what we implement and put into place is going to serve the community in its best way. Um, so speaking about those services, another thing that's been discussed potentially for this idea is somewhat of an access center uh, for Swan River Services. Um, where services can be centralized and individuals looking to access service or requiring uh, service don't have to walk all over the community. And I know our community is not massive, but in minus 40 weather and having to walk from our office to the hospital, to EIA, to AFM, to this, to that, to everything, uh, just to get some answers is very daunting and incredibly taxing for an individual to do. Um, and, you know, when somebody is dealing with with um, not even knowing where they're going to stay that night or what they're going to eat next and stuff, it can be very hard to to really have that motivation and push to, to walk all over the place in that cold weather and so forth to, to try and make some of that happen. I know it seems kind of silly to say that because uh, some people sitting here might think, well, you know, that's something that if, if they want help, they need to do that. But, you know, it's, it's not as easy as that. Um, so we're looking at a potential for this complex to actually house other services so that it doesn't just house, it's not just housing, but it's also an access center. And maybe that's where some of the programming and, and services that I spoke about earlier uh, could be offered out of. So as I said, we are definitely in the infant stages of this. Um, we're not entirely sure on the name yet, uh, if it's, we're gonna keep it tier one or if we're gonna come up with something a little bit more um, well-rounded as far as uh, access center and some of those concepts might go. Um, but anyway, we do continue to discuss. We have uh, a great group of individuals around the table that are very passionate about this. Uh, they work in it or they're community members that are just passionate about this type of work. Um, we are planning to invite individuals who are currently experiencing homelessness and that sort of thing in our community to come and, and share with us so that we are not just stating what we think people need, but we have uh, true knowledge of um, true knowledge and insight of them telling us what they need and what this might look like. And uh, we do feel, in, again, in order for this to be um, done properly, that there has to be some grassroots community development approach to it. Um, and as far as some next steps are going, we are looking at what kind of options exist currently because uh, locally there really isn't anything uh, that we can that we can draw on that has this type of concept. So we're going to have to take this to a provincial scope or even national uh, or beyond, depending, um, to see what kind of options and opportunities there might be for us to implement here in the community. Um, so I mean, I've got like 30 to 35 years before retirement. So unless the lottery picks my numbers, I'm I'm in it. For for the long haul. Like I said, it's a marathon, not a race, um, but I am passionate about this and I truly believe it's something that the community needs. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wigley. And just uh, 
uh, go ahead, Mr. Armstrong, and then I'll finish up with uh, Mr. Wigley. I just want to make a comment so everyone uh, understands the the, uh, the full contents and text of the scope of, of what this organization is doing and working for right now. When I say that Mr. Wolchuk is not here, uh, we, we also must realize that he has been a part of the task force and the subcommittee from the start uh, in, in, in very purposeful and meaningful, meaningful aspects. Uh, thus far, he's been able to put us together with uh, ministers as part of the, the, the uh, task force meetings, and uh, also there are three ministers that are waiting in the wings to begin working with us on these projects. So I just want you guys to realize that as we move forward, uh, that these subcommittees and the task force within the consortium, we're not working within a vacuum. So, uh, Mr. Wintoni. Sorry, and if I could just add one more piece that, that tipped me off, uh, Derek, so thank you, is the other thing that we have to consider is it's quite easy, and I know from experience with CMHA, it's quite easy to find funding to build something. Um, there's lots and lots of money out there if we want to build something, um, but it's a very different story or very different out outlook when we um, come to find operational dollars. So um, that's the other piece that takes some time is securing that operational those operational dollars so that if we build something we're not scrounging constantly to look at how to operate it properly and, and again effectively um, so I just want to throw that out there but as Derek said Rick has been around the, the table uh, Mr. Wojcik there has been around the table and he has um, mentioned a few different uh, minister names and so forth so I do feel like we can be in a good position moving forward when the time comes. Thank you, James. Thanks, uh, Mr. Armstrong. And just to uh, put that in a little bit of perspective, too, uh, when James says 35 years, I assure you that it's not going to take 35 years to get this off the ground. There's some great people, as James indicated, sitting around that table. Um, you look at uh, Anna Fullerton and Amy Shaw in the concerned uh, citizens of the North Parkland who are tied into that group who are offering an immense amount of support. So we have, as Mr. Armstrong men mentioned, uh, uh, Mr. Wojcik and his team waiting waiting in the wings to, to help us along the way. And, and that is definitely one of the challenges this group is going to face is ongoing um, uh, financial aid. It's not necessarily the bricks and mortar, it's the aid to continue to operate. So th that is one of the areas that they are going to continue to explore and come up with ideas. But I, I'm very confident that this committee will uh, will have this up and running long before 35 years are up. James, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, all right, moving on to, uh, I know that we are cutting it close for time, but uh, our last committee of, uh, last but not least, our Restorative Justice Committee um, with Sergeant Henson and Ms. Grindle. Um, Stacy, why don't you go first, and then Sergeant Henson, if you could follow in behind her with, with those gaps, if, she, if in whatever context Stacy may have missed or add to. So Ms. Grindle, go ahead. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So, um, uh, Sergeant Steve Hansen and I have been connecting quite a bit, and um, I've requested to attend any justice meetings and policing partnerships that are available. I've also connected with uh, Mrs. Yelnick and moving forward with Sherry Fedor um, within the Restorative Justice Committee. So I'm looking to get on that Restorative Just Justice Committee. It's been quiet, of course, through COVID um, as meetings were not being able to be connected, but I'm excited to start that process and have a seat around um, those, those circles and those discussions. I'm also looking forward to connecting with John Howard Society. I know it's been a bumpy path with them in the past. They're a provincially funded um, group that is to um, be supporting our area. Their job is to work with people who have come into conflict with the law. Um, they review and evaluate and advocate for changes within the criminal justice system, and they do some public education on different things relating to criminal the criminal law. So I'm looking forward to connecting with them and ensuring that that relationship within our community and them becomes much stronger. I've had some great positive relations, relationships with them in the past. Um, Johnny and I have been working closely to get the COPS program going, again with Sergeant Hansen and his team. Lots of the paperwork is being completed and uh, we're looking to do the virtual training sessions. 
Um, and we've been speaking with lots of those volunteers and getting new people signed up for that. So that's exciting. Naomi and I have attended the Provincial Retail Crime Prevention Meeting. A year ago, I had, I had gone to Winnipeg with ministers and business owners, large companies, small companies, um, and all the above and we were talking about retail crime prevention so a couple of weeks ago we reconnected again and there's some pilot projects that are happening in the city and there's some supports coming down the pipe along with a few committees and um, a diff different boards that we will be participating on and that I'm going to be working closely with Sergeant Hansen and Mr. Stan Anderson uh, who's been very much into the security especially for a lot of our businesses um, who rely on him a lot for that security and he, he's been closely connected with us and a real support in that area to answer a lot of questions so we're hoping to keep all of those folks in the loop moving forward thank you miss grindle uh, sergeant henson go ahead please Sergeant Henson, are you there? Can you hear me? Very faintly, sir. Okay. I phone on my Sergeant Hanson, we can't get you, perhaps a bad connection. Um, Mr. Armstrong, did you want to fill anything in here? We're not getting anything from Steve here. Yeah, I think I could probably just add a couple little things and, and I appreciate all the work that's been, been happening behind the scenes. Um, Sorry, uh, Mr. Armstrong, we have somebody in the waiting room. Just give us one moment here to see what. That is Sergeant yeah. Hang oh, on. that's Steve. We have Steve coming in, I think, here. Sorry, Eric. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Go ahead, Sergeant Henson. Okay. I was hearing you guys really well, but uh, unfortunately, the microphone wasn't working on my laptop. So, my in on the iPhone, essentially, I'm just echoing what Stacy's already said. Uh, it's pretty exciting times right now. Uh, basically, looking forward to our ongoing partnership with Stan Anderson and for the discussion on the cameras. Uh, basically, from a policing perspective, cameras are very important to us, uh, especially these days when we're dealing with, it's not just shoplifters and that, and it's not just uh, attempted b &Es, but essentially that sometimes there's suspicious people around and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a call and uh, essentially that they'll share video with us and then we kind of figure out what's going on and uh, it's, for solving crime is really important uh, moving on to the copp it's it's, it's been a while but it is pretty looking pretty good right now uh, we're moving ahead very nicely um uh, i thank david mario for his uh, involvement at the beginning and such and i'm really happy with where we're at now and uh, basically that uh, our office, I've got Jennifer Campbell and myself are contacts from our office and we work together with Johnny and Stacy as far as um, getting things moving with the COPP. Um, moving over to the John Howard Society. Uh, they had a presence here a couple of years ago and then it just kind of fell off the map. When they had the presence, it worked well. And they had two employees at the time in Dolphin. And then those people moved on. They left and they weren't replaced. And then they were managing it out of, out of Brandon. And that wasn't wasn't so effective. So essentially, uh, I believe they'll be coming back to our area and we may reach out to them first. And essentially that uh, reestablish a partnership between them, our local uh, Justice Committee and the RCMP and essentially uh, tailor it to what works best for, for our communities and what we have and then of course we can we can brainstorm and, and make adjustments where needed but uh, we want to look after ourselves our communities and that and then I'm quite excited with uh, the prospect of Stacy Grindle joining the local Justice Committee that is very good and uh, basically 
uh, because of our background in criminology, having our partnerships in the past in, in Alberta with the John Howard Society, her knowledge, and also our, her, her commitment to community. So basically, on the restorative justice front, from my humble view, I'm, I'm quite optimistic. Thank you, Sergeant Henson. So uh, I guess uh, wrapping that uh, program up, it's bringing all of those existing organizations to the forefront and bringing it to the table of the consortium of the task force and sharing that information and uh, uh, moving forward in that regard, assisting uh, policing, things like that with the COP program that is uh, well under its, well on its way. Um, with that being said, I know that we are over time, and I do apologize for that, but my, our team wanted to bring all the information to this council um, and share all the information that we were with. Mr. Armstrong, any closing remarks, and then we can go into questions. I guess a final, final remark for everyone is, is that this is not a, an organization in, inside of the consortium that lives in a vacuum, like I mentioned before. We're looking for partnerships uh, with First Nations. Uh, they're, they're already a part of the, uh, the consortium. We're looking for partnerships within the community. We want people to have a desire to take action within their community uh, to support and promote uh, safety and security. Um, you know, Mr. Hansen had made a comment about uh, cameras. I can tell you that at the co-op last year, my AP team, we, we conducted 141 investigations. This is part and parcel of who we need to be in the future within this community. Uh, take a stand uh, in a very uh, positive manner and a holistic approach to how we deal with these things. Hence the programming, hence the tier one housing, uh, hence the security and the task force and the, the holistic approach to, to the restorative justice. So I want to thank my team at large. Uh, everybody has been, been very participatory and I invite all counsel and anyone watching to give a phone call, ask how to be a part of the Zoom meetings, how to get involved, and we'll, we'll have a job for you. And we'd love to take you on, uh, whether it's any of the council that is here that's not part yet or any of the community at large. All right, anybody have any questions? Okay, so anybody have any questions? Uh, Councilor White. I have two. Is there any possibility you guys could get a flow chart to show who looks after what, phone numbers, areas of responsibility, and then uh, a lay person like myself, I think I have sort of an idea, but I have a handful of meetings that I still get mixed up, so I'd love to see a flow chart. And uh, have you guys considered buying an existing building? Uh, for example, uh, John Deere at the edge of town, a huge building sitting out there empty, just a thought. <laughs> Mr. Montoni, if, if I can speak to the, the flowchart question from Mr. White, and then I'll, I'll uh, move that other question to you. Um, just with respect to the, uh, the your comment, Dwayne, uh, I have recognized that you've made that request before. Uh, we've just finished fleshing out essentially the structure, uh, and I think what will happen now over the next month or two, we can put something together that will outline this, because ultimately what it does is it, it shows the consortium, it shows the task force, it shows the grandchildren as the subcommittees, and it of course inside of that the chairs it's going to show uh the mission of each and the participants of each uh so I, I think we can certainly do that because we want to be able to uh to promote that within the community and the communities at large that, near, that are nearby that are working with us so uh that is something we will work on thank you and i guess i can speak to the building in question that you referred to councillor white and and I don't think we're quite at that stage yet. We're not ruling that option out, um, but we are not at that stage to make a, make a formal purchase of a, of a piece of property at this time. But please note that that is in our uh, playing field and we are, are looking at all options at this point. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. Uh, I guess on my part here, you know, I, I do thank you all for uh, attending tonight, uh, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, a, a conversation that we had uh, a few times and a couple weeks ago as well. That I do thank you and, and your entire committee for all what they're doing. Uh, namely, you know, uh, we have some really good partnerships that you had mentioned with the Albert Shark Trap Friction Center, First Nations groups. I know I spoke with uh, Chief Janai just actually a couple days ago. Um, and then some of your, your, your uh, chairs as well, and all their teams. You know, Mr. Wigley there, we know that he has uh, a lot of work that he's working on with his uh, uh, volunteers and employees. And uh, Ms. Stacey um, Grindle, as well as uh, Mr. Uh, Henson, 
uh, Jessica LaCasse, uh, but I also do want to recognize that somebody that on your committees has been a really good advocate for the town of Swan River and for our valley and more or less too, but uh, Mr. Dick and all the work that he has done and, uh, and the benefactor of our community to help people in, in those needs. and. Uh, we were very thankful for having him. I don't know if I heard that he's leaving or, or just maybe he just want to be the chair or something, but we do appreciate from this side of the, t uh, the, the, the table anyways, for all the work that you have done, uh, Mr. Dick. So uh, thank you on behalf of council and the residents of the town of Swan River. And then uh, of course, I, I wanted to say that, uh, you know, thank you to your committees. And one thing we have to keep in mind of, and, and that is that we can't solve our issues of our community on our own. It is a team effort and a group effort. And uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. And I think this consortium group is a, a good thing for the town of Swan River to, to move in the right direction. So I thank you all. Very much appreciated. And you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Council. All right. So we're going to move on uh, from there. So thank you, everybody. If you all want to stay uh, in attendance to our regular meeting, you're more than welcome to uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Otherwise, bye. Moving on to 6.1, resulted the letter from the Swan Valley Crisis Center dated February 21, 2021, together with the enclosed annual statistic report 2019 and 20, and audited financial statement for the year ended March 31st, 2020 be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, you have the um, your letter and also your financial statements there as well. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the 2020 reports from the Northwest Regional Immigrant Services be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion. You have the letter there from uh, Immigrant Services. In fact, I guess if Councillor Gray has any comments on that, or maybe there's not, I think it's pretty much self -explanatory. No, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We give a very small grant, but it's a required, it's required that we give the grant to get the other money. So uh, I have some comments perhaps during my report, but um, it's a pretty straightforward report. It's running well. Uh, it's bringing in a huge amount of money and we're operating for Swan River and the Paul. Excellent. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1, result that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? No discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7 2 Result of the January 2021 Protected Services Report be received. Moved by Councillor White. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councillor White. I just saw the, uh, I'm assuming Mr. Fedor, Chief Fedorovsky is here. I see the word incendiary. I, I think a definition of that, please. That was the fire on the, uh, it's your first one on your list. It, 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 incendiary is a set fire. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3 reports. Let's start with uh, Councillor Delorier. Okay, just let me make sure I'm not muted here. Um, okay, uh, last Monday I had a planning district meeting. Uh, we went over our budget. Um, 
our our budgeted amount will stay the same as uh, for the planning district will stay the same as uh, previous, um, but uh, the town of Swan River's share will go up slightly just due to the fact that uh, the the amounts owing to the planning district are based on uh, a rolling average of development permits in each of the members areas. So our, our share of the development permits went up, so our share of the budget went up slightly. Um, and then Thursday, I uh, had a uh, conservation district meeting. Um, it's, uh, boy, if I learned about a hundred new acronyms there. Um, it was my first meeting where we got into the business of, of the conservation district. So, uh, so it was just uh, a, a lot to learn. Um, uh, nothing specific to report, uh, but I can I can share the minutes uh, w with council when uh, when I receive them. Uh, on that, Councillor Deloria, do you have anything that you want to add in camera on that uh, topic from that evening? Yeah, I think we can. Uh, I can. I can uh, mention a few things in camera there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, moving on, uh, Councillor Friesen. Um, thank you. I took uh, the library meeting. Jason asked because he was busy with the other one. Um, it was nice to be back in the library. It is open with restrictions now. Um, the meeting had um, discussion on quotes for replacing all the lights in the library. They want to get rid of the fluorescence and the LED. So, they're hoping to get about three different quotes from electricians to get a price because it's expensive. Uh, they also had a tentative budget set out. Uh, it's nothing definite yet, but it's something to look at, and I'm sure Councillor Delore will. I have left all the stuff on your desk, Councillor Delore. Thank you. Uh, yesterday I had a CDC meeting, uh, Communities of Care. First time I've done a Zoom, and I managed to do it. Um, they're looking for a new treasurer, and I think they have a line on that, which may include some high school students, which is good. They're planning their uh, spring break activities, and with that, I'd like to wish Lorianne a happy birthday because it's her that plans the spring break activities. Also, happy birthday to you, Lance. Um, July 1st, I'm really hesitant about picnic in the park. I really can't see it happening. I do not want to invite two or three hundred kids down to the park with COVID, so I would love you can stay up on here for a little bit longer. I will hold on. But I would like Mr. Fedorchuk to see if he's got fireworks ordered for this July 1st, because we can still do them like we did last year. Yes, he is. Darren, are you there? Yes, I am. Do you think you could talk to the fireworks guys for me? I will follow up with uh, Mr. Fedorchik and Rack. That was passed over to Ms. Novak last year. Okay, so as long as somebody does it and we want them high like they were last year. Okay, I'll make sure it's taken care of. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, that's all for me. Okay. Just on the uh, the library, you mentioned about light upgrade to LED. Sorry. I don't know through uh, uh, Councillor Delorier, but uh, there might be uh, some grants through uh, Mountain Hydro as well, so that might be an opportunity there. I don't know if it was spoken about, but I think there are some grants. It was spoken about. Okay. They had they had one quote already, and they've already. Used Conducted a grant plus uh, GST to give what it would be with that particular electrician. And one of the other members suggested that we don't just go with the one, we should get quotes from another couple. It's not true. That's what they do. Okay, thank you. Councilor Morio. Um, nothing too spectacular, uh, just our regular cow meeting uh, last week along with our. Uh, a special meeting that we held last week where we uh, listened to uh, our newly minted CEO's uh, presentation to council on his vision. So uh, congratulations Mr. Poole on your 
appointment to the position of CEO for the town. So. And um, also had a meeting with uh, Councillor White and Brandon Stock, um, also the newly minted care team manager at the Swan Valley Health Facility, um, in regarding to uh, doing some uh, initial planning on nurse and professional recruitment uh, to the facility here at the Valley. So, uh, that's a work on progress. So we'll, uh, continue working on that and we're grateful forward to the council and the foundation uh, some of our uh, plans that we get formalized from there. And that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dippermano. Thank you. Uh, and just to mention I was at the planning district meeting along with Councillor Deloria. He did touch on on that so I am not going to repeat that. Uh, I just want to share my um, welcoming uh, Mr. Poole, as our CAO, this is your first uh, count, uh, regular council meeting as not an acting, not as an interim, not as anything, just as our CAO. So welcome, welcome aboard and uh, we look forward to sharing the successes with you as we venture forward. Um, just wanted to mention to council, I do have, we do have a airport commission meeting coming up tomorrow. Um, and I know that council has approved uh, the um, opening of the constitution within the airport commission. And just wondering um, perhaps if there's any direction that you'd like to see at the commission's meeting tomorrow, perhaps whether it's uh, uh, because that was approved, does that mean that we would like to see a, a draft or is that something that we'd rather approach at the G5? So if there's any comments or concerns with that, I would bring those forward tomorrow. We, we, we can actually just maybe touch base on that a little bit in camera tonight. Sure. Okay. Um, other than that, I have nothing else to report on. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gray. And I don't have a lot either. Um, I've given notice with respect to a matter that we're going to raise. I think it's most appropriate. We're, we're quite late already, so I'm not going to raise it tonight, but I think at the next uh, council meeting, um, it's a matter I sent a letter on some time ago. Um, and so I'm going to ask that, that I'll raise it either in this period or uh, as an item of the agenda. Uh, I, we've already talked about the committee of the whole meeting and the shared services meeting um, for uh, for in camera, we have a report on uh, the lawsuit that I think we should review. I assume everybody's gotten that. Um, in terms of settlement services, I mentioned um, that I had some further comments. We get regular and continuing reports uh, and have been doing our board meetings effectively through um, email. It's, it's kind of a strange circumstance, but uh, we have not even done Zoom meetings. We've just um, gone through the reports and approved them. Everything seems to be working um, incredibly um, effectively. Um, there is one other item. Um, there is a young lady who's decided to take on trying to get grants for the women's locker. You'll all recall my thoughts on that. I think it's scandalous. We haven't addressed it already uh, at the arena. Um, and so she's asking for a letter of support with respect to uh, approaching um, various government bodies for that. And so I'm going to ask that we do a resolution with respect to that. I don't know whether it's appropriate to do it this evening or refer that to a uh, matter of the committee of the whole. It was just brought to my attention yesterday. Um, and. Um, I don't think we've finished the pool stuff yet. And of course, uh, the review of the um, changes to the opening would suggest that the hall will remain closed, at least for the immediate uh, period until at least March 25th. I don't think there's anything else to report, Your Worship. Okay. So um, just on the item that you had asked to be on the agenda, um, you're giving notice so we can add that to new business to our next meeting, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. That's fine. Okay. And, and I, I don't know about the women's locker, the same thing. I, I assume it should go to the committee of the whole. That's the most appropriate place to discuss issues when they first arise. Yeah, I think that's fair. If that's okay with you, and then they can come forward at the next uh, regular meeting. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor White. Uh, relatively busy. Uh, a couple of things happened at the committee of the whole. I think the public should, should be aware of that. One of the things we discussed was zoning and proposed amendments. I so thought it was interesting, and building bylaws, we do listen to the public, of course we do, they're our bosses, 
So that was discussed. But the one that I felt was really incentive was the discussion of tax incentives, tax breaks, whatever you want to call them, to attract businesses or encourage development within our community. And uh, that would be working with RISE, of course, but I would encourage the community to uh, consider ideas they may want to share with council about, hey, what would bring you to Swan River, what would bring your friends to Swan River? Because we're certainly open to those ideas. Then on the 25th, I too had the pleasure of uh, welcoming our new CEO, uh, Mr. Poole. We've been together 11 years now? 12. 12 years, and, and we've, you've been very patient with me. Thank you. I haven't had to be patient with you. On the uh, 25th, uh, Councilor Moore and myself uh, met with, again, as you mentioned, the Director of Nursing. The one things we're planning, we want to go to the Chamber of Ingress Rise. I don't know where it is. There's a whole series of things that the community chamber took to Thompson and or Flin Flon to promote our community blackboards and posters and handouts. So I'll be trying to track that down if and when uh, I believe it will happen. Uh, Councilor Moore and myself and Mr. Poole or Mr. Stock and whoever else will be going to the pod and meet with the, uh, the UCN nurses at some day in the future. So uh, there's lots of good ideas there. Uh, PMH message is just staying the same. Yeah, our numbers are plummeting in Manitoba, certainly not throughout the world. And there's two causes of, uh, of the COVID, a dense population and a dense population. I don't want to be disrespectful, but if we, if we wear masks and we wash and we distance and limit the number of people we relate to, we can handle this thing. And I think sometimes as those numbers go down, we become a little complacent. And I would encourage our uh, community to not become complacent. Uh, Mr. Morrow, as, as chair of the uh, Protective Service, I want to thank you uh, publicly for the work you've done with COP. And uh, it's, a, it's a continuum, of course. And PMAs, David. I'll probably get fined for this. Uh, Sport Fish is going to be changing their dinner because of COVID to a drive through You phone it in ahead of time and they'll give it to you through the door. I see the fine, I see the boxes. <laughs> it's going over. But those money stay in our community. Absolutely. And, and the past has been good money and uh, we appreciate that. So that's it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And uh, it's good to hear that uh, that group is, you know, looking beyond, uh, you know, their borders are basically and, yep. and looking beyond and, and making sure that they can continue on because it is a good uh, a good group uh, that we need to have in this valley for the future of, of that uh, uh, resource yep. and uh, well, that's good to hear and uh, we're looking forward to that trust me so we'll get fired no it's all good uh, for myself uh, other than what was already mentioned I, I, you know business consortium group I was in that meeting here um, a few weeks ago and, and I was enlightened and then hearing again tonight, I think they're, like I said before, they're, they're going in the right direction and, and I think it's a good thing for our community. I sat in on the RISE meeting, I think that a little bit was discussed there, they're, they're still looking at uh, some changes to the organizational uh, structure, so to speak, uh, trying to get maybe some people on board uh, from the community on that board, but that's still kind of it's in its infancy stages and uh, def definitely needs to be discussed at a, at a G4 meeting, which I will say that um, the read from Mount has spoke to me last week and right now there's nothing scheduled at all right now, period. So we're just waiting for that and if, if that's not going to happen, then I think that we're going to have to, uh, we maybe as a group uh, or council maybe have to suggest uh, uh, calling one ourselves and maybe having one here because because of the rise and a few other things we need to, to talk about. And so um, I will speak with uh, the Reeve at the end of the week and see what his thoughts are. But if it's not going to be something in the, in the short term, then we need to come together with something there. So maybe that's something that we can talk about also if we need a little bit in camera. Um, I have been in discussions with the MLA Wolchuk on the uh, Main Street West uh, paving project for 2021. So we have to get that letter to him, and he's going to go and lobby uh, MI, MI and also uh, the minister. We certainly would like to see that project done this summer. I think it's really important for uh, a project to be completed and, and wrapped up. Um, also, with the, uh, the MLA, we've been talking a little bit, uh, getting a, a meeting set up with the health minister on the CT scanner. So she's. Uh, more than happy to uh, arrange something, so we're just in the works of getting that uh, organized. So that's something that 
we're going to get uh, underway shortly. She definitely wants to hear from us, and she wants to hear what the community has uh, as far as what we're you know, kind of organized and what our thoughts are. She wants to be part of that discussion, and uh, it sounds uh, positive. I know I've said that probably about a year ago when we had another minister come in on site, but uh, I think that we always have to keep positive and, 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 and we always have to keep the, the gas on the pedal. And lastly, I just want to wish my, my wife of uh, 16 years marriage a happy uh, anniversary. So on that, uh, we'll uh, move on uh, with the uh, CAO report. So I did give council a small report. Uh, I guess first and foremost, uh, thanks to Director of Public Works, Darren Harvey, for stepping in. I think it's a uh, testament to his capabilities. He will, it's been a smooth transition, I'm sure it'll continue to be smooth uh, with how thorough he's, he's uh, performed his job. I'm sure it will be, I'm sure it'll be an excellent job in the future of Director of Public Works. Uh, and as I say in the report, I'm moving on with the hiring plan, so let's expect resolutions on the next uh, agenda to move forward with that, uh, just tightening up our agreements with our directors for the situation we're in. Uh, I plan on getting the wage scales to council for the next count meeting, at least the first uh, draft, so you guys can review. Uh, preparing for an airport meeting tomorrow, there's lots going on this year at the airport commission, so I'm sure it'll be exciting, but trying to stay on top of uh, those duties and lots of land sale processes we're going through, conditional use processes. And I'm still moving into the office, so uh, I'll thank, then I want to thank Council for the encouragement to uh, uh, you know, the support you guys give me. And we've been working together for 12 years and I hope to continue the relationship. Okay. Thank you, and, uh, and obviously, uh, I, I do want to uh, welcome you aboard, and I think that uh, we'll have a, a positive working uh, you know, atmosphere, and we look forward to uh, everything that we can to build this administration, this group, and, and, and the organization to be uh, better and stronger than, than ever. And I, and I feel very confident that we're in, in good hands moving forward. I just had one more comment. I, I did miss on my on my report, and I, that was to um, welcome Mr. Harvey into his role, and congratulations on that, and and thank you for stepping up into that role. And and uh, when we say you you have big shoes to fill, you do, but I know that you can that you will uh, be able to rise to the challenge. So thank you, and and welcome to your new role. Is Peter bigger than theirs? Darren's feet bigger than Derek's. So oh. <laughs> All right, so moving then on to uh, 8.1. Result of the offer to purchase lots 17, 18, and 19, Block 1, Plan 2554, be accepted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion. What is this? You have there uh, the. Uh, Purchase uh, price and, and obviously, or the offer to purchase, sorry, and the reference map to the area of the industrial park area down Third Avenue South. Councillor Gray. Um, I, I am wondering why the offer or why we're accepting an offer less than half the ostensible value and if we're planning on offering incentives as well with with the lower offer uh the incentive plans would not be available but uh i guess in the end I don't think our incentive bylaw has that in its writing, so I, I believe that you know, it's possible it's there, but we may have to re review that bylaw if the you know if it has to be upfront that you will not receive the incentive if uh, you pay less than the assessed value. Uh, that was not. Uh, uh, I don't know if that was discussed with the buyer. To be honest with you, 
Dipper Mayor Wintoni, and then Councilor Delorier. Uh, Mr. Harvey or Mr. Poole, in, in looking at the assessed value, those are for four lots for the assessed value that we have. The buyer purchaser is looking only for the three, correct? So I think according to my calculations, it it's uh, it is less than what is assessed, but not significant. Councilor Delorier. Well, uh, Mr. Poole may have already answered it, but my question was, uh, had that discussion been had with the purchaser about uh, eligibility for, for the uh, incentive plan? Um, but, I, but I take it from his comment that that discussion has not been had prior to them making this offer? No, they, they never, the purchaser did not inquire about it. And our bylaw doesn't state it, so I guess it, you know, it, it's not a trigger for us to, to state that. Um, Councillor White and then Morio and Gray. Is that not the place where you guys store a lot of snow? So what, have you got an offer this spot? I'm not heard of snow. Okay, well, if you have a spot, I'm okay. Councilor Morio? Um, regarding the incentive, that we, we can all also say as part of this offer to accept that price, we can also put as a condition that each year to accept that lower price, you are not eligible for the incentive program even though it doesn't specifically, and we may need to do some work on that to actually clarify that in the future. But if we do accept um, that lower price, we put it as a condition to accept that price, you're not eligible for that. And the second question I have, um, like assuming from the name here, uh, but do we know what that intended purpose, like what business or he's trying to put there? I'm yeah, I shop for a store in Canada. He's a floating, he's a contractor. Okay. So fertilizer application and some trucks, some storage for that. And so in general, that's your head. So it fits up with that. Uh, the other thing, too, I don't know if it's been done with industrial, but with residential, if someone offers less than the uh, asking price, two years away from the where they have two years to build. They don't build by that time, maybe they're paid the remainder, or they forfeit the property and keep what they pay. So we put that as two conditions. Yeah. You can. Was that everything? Yeah. Councillor Gray. Yeah, I, I didn't hear, I think that was Mr. Harvey's comments. I didn't hear. Um, um, exactly, but it. Uh, is it the case that, and, and this was the question I was asking, or the other question I was asking, um, I just got an email, so I got, I got, I got distracted, I'm sorry. Um, is is it the case that, that there's a requirement that he build within a period of time, dealing which he'd have to pay a, a different price? Yeah, I was just saying we have examples from uh, residential sales, lot sales, where, and this has gone to the lawyer, so it has the correct wording, but essentially they have two years to build it to lock up stage. And if they don't, then they either have to pay the asking price or the listed price, or they forfeit the property back to the town. So we could do something similar with this where he has two years to build it. And if he doesn't, then he has to either pay the full price or we keep his uh, payments to get the flashback. Council, okay. Councilor Gray, anything further? Oh, I, I assume that, that my, you know, I assume that, that um, administration will uh, make those changes and, sub, and subject to those. I, uh, so I'm not sure if we need to adjust the motion because I'm not sure we want to accept the offer in the form it's written, but with those amendments, I would be prepared to accept the offer. So, do we have any insight into what the discussion has been? I mean, the, the offer here, I guess we're, we're in essence counter offering this person for the price that they're offering, but with conditions. That I'm, I'm just wondering if what the discussion has been with the purchaser as far as any of these conditions we're talking about here tonight. Uh, so, I was talking, this is uh, Darren Harvey. I was talking to him with regards to lot size, uh, water and sewer, and uh, 
different access, and then I did hand it over to uh, acting CAO uh, Peggy Kilman. So I'm not sure if she mentioned and sent a program to him, but that was kind of right on her last couple of days, kind of thing. So as far as I'm aware, he was just told to write in an offer to uh, council, and then council would discuss it, and they would either accept it, reject it, or come back with a counter offer with conditions. That part I discussed with him, but uh, as far as whether we set the program, I'm not sure if uh, former acting CAO uh, maybe we'll discuss that. Did, th th this is the highest offer I've seen on this land in, in all my years here. I'm willing to sell it. Okay, so is there any uh, changes to the resolution, or do we want to move the mover and seconder? Sorry, the mover and seconder were. Mm, I can't remember anymore. I think you're one of them. Wasn't it Councillor yeah. and Tony and no. Councillor Mayor? Okay, so or Councillor uh, uh, White? Yeah. Yes. I I moved to uh, add, uh, add the condition of. Uh, um, as Mr. As Mr. Harvey indicated, the two years accepting the uh, the proposed price uh, and the two year condition of building and then no and the no and the no accept the plan both and uh, that's only the two is the two year building requirement and then the I, I don't know that we if it, if he hasn't put in that there's an incentive program and it's not covered we don't need to put it in uh, I, um, in my view. And, but we do need to find out, Councillor Gloria is quite right, I think we need to find out whether or not that was ever discussed with them because if it was discussed we need to say no that's not part of it or it is part of it but we need to know that before we accept because if, he's, if it's been represented to him he's entitled to it. So on that note if Council wants to they can table this table. until the next meeting. Yep. I motion to table it uh, and have administration uh, give us a report on what the discussions are up to this point. Okay. I'll second it. So motion to table. So we get our next meeting. <clears throat> Moving on to 8.2. Result of swap. Hold on the table. I don't think we need to hold on the table. No. Mm, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so we had a motion to table that was seconded by Councillor White. All in favor of the motion? All in favor? Opposed? It's table. Result of the Swan Valley Planning District 2021 budget be accepted. Moved by Dr. Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Anybody from the Planning District on that? I, I spoke on it earlier. I, uh, really, the budget has uh, stayed the same the last few years. Our portion only changes based on uh, on how much we're using the district. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.3. Result of Swan Valley Planning District 2010 levy of 7477 and 79 cents. Be approved for payment, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.4 Resolved that the $1,000 annual grant to the Swan Valley Crisis Center be approved for payment for 2021. Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor White. Uh, just for semantics, I note the uh, the crisis center just today, somebody can help me with that. They just, it's all women and children? I believe so. I'm just wondering why I'm sure there are bad or men, but I'm not, that's time for another discussion another day. Okay, further discussion? Oh, Councillor Gray. Uh, yes, uh, can, can, oh, yeah, I am wrong. Um, we talked about this last year, and I, I think we talked about it maybe you're interested in the budgeting process, um, but $1,000 seems incredibly, um, let me use the right word, cheap, 
and and so unless that's all they're asking for um i i no opposed i'm not opposed to the if that's what they've originally asked for but if they need something more i mean the crisis center in my view is is one of those facilities that is absolutely essential and i think that we should um like a thousand dollars just seems such a small amount um i've spoke with her and and that's what they have requested over the last several years is the one thousand dollars if that's all they need then um then obviously i guess we don't need to step up but um, it just seems like an awfully small amount maybe it's just the same as the settlement services where you have to give a small amount in order to justify other grants yeah i, I think that's part of it because they do receive a fairly a fair amount i think from provincial and federal funding i think but i know that she had mentioned to me that um that's what they had asked for was about one thousand dollars but i don't know what else to say besides that so for the discussion all in favor Opposed, it's carried. 8.5, result of the request for funding in the amount of $4,000 to the North West Regional Immigrant Services for the year 2021 be approved. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed, it's carried. I said earlier that that organization I think is a really good organization as well for uh, for our community. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 27257 to number 27315 as listed on Schedule A totaling $147,627.50. Payroll accounts checks number 4816 to number 4822 as listed on Schedule B, totaling $74,364.35. Direct deposits totaling $700 as per Schedule C. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wing Tony, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Uh, check number. Zero zero two seven three ten um, to Swan River Home Hardware. Um, what did we purchase from there for that amount? It, 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 we have an open account there, so they actually do several different purchases. Oh, so this would be a accumulation of a number of invoices? Yes, yes. Okay. Please, I can actually answer one of them. I can get back to you. If no, but that's what it is. Is that everything? Yep. Councilor White. For uh, for Mark Equipment Limited, uh, 27259 at unit number 12, Brooms and Spacers. What? That would be the room for the airport. Well, it's a big room on a device. It's like a pretty expensive room, so it's really supposed to work to you. Thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of bylaw 1 2021 being a bylaw of the town of Swan Rivers to establish a rate for collection of residential waste and recycling material as a special service for the town of Swan River for 2021 be read a first time. Moved by Dipper, or Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor Morio, um, and then Councilor Gray. I think it's just important to note that uh, this is not a new bylaw. It's just a renewing of the existing bylaws that we've had uh, for a number of years. I believe it's been in existence since 2016 or before. So this is just an updating of the number. So it's not a new tax. It's just uh, um, spreading the cost of the garbage and recycling collection against all properties, um, whether uh, exempt or not. Um, so um, without this bylaw, the, that cost would be just absorbed by the general rate payers. So they're basically residential taxes would go up. This is basically spreading the cost against all users. Um, 
and it's not a new tax as a lot of people believe. We go through this every time with uh, these special services bylaws that people see the hearing notice that uh, council is implementing a new tax. And uh, for the last number of years, these are not new taxes. They're just uh, renewing and updating the numbers because we can't predict what these costs are going to be four or five years down the road. That's why they're only done on an annual or biannual uh, basis. Um, but as we said during the hearing, if any people got any questions, uh, please contact the administration and uh, they'll answer your questions and we'll take the advice with uh, consideration of some of the questions that were uh, presented in here. Right. And very similar to our other special services that we have to renew uh, time to time. Councillor Gray. Uh, sorry, I accidentally muted myself. Um, as long as it's going to be referred after this, as I said, I agree that it should be read a first time. It is an important piece and it's not a new bylaw. There may be new considerations. So I assume that there's going to be a discussion at the Committee of the Whole before we get a second reading. Um, that's the process that we um, normally use. So um, I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. And when it comes up there, we can dis discuss whether there should be alternative uh, provisions. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the purpose of the... Uh like you said, the first reading for us to hear what others have to say, and if we can take something away and make improvements to it, then that's what we're, our job is to do. So, yes. Further discussion, Councillor White. Did we not send out a sort of a, a news release, a mailer, identifying what these numbers were? Yes. Yeah, we did. So then, uh, I just agree 100 percent with Councillor Morris. If that little paragraph had put it been put into that news release which i don't think it was saying hey this is not a new tax this is why we're doing it this is that explains it i think that would just diffuse a lot of the concerns i can make a note for next year's special services bylaws uh to maybe add something we we put only what's required in those ads yeah but but that's not that point. saves a lot of angst in, in a lot of our releases thank you if i can if I can just read from the public notice, it says the town of Swan River has provided the service and has done so for many years. Um, All right, so that's in there. But again, we can look at that and if we have to make improvements to it uh, to make it uh, more understandable, I guess, then, then we can do that as, as, as best as possible. And, and at the bottom, it says this bylaw will be replacing bylaw number 14 slash 2019. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gideon. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11-2, resolved bylaw 2, 2021, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to administer and enforce the design construction, erection, placement, and occupancy of new buildings and the alteration, demolition, and change in occupancy of existing buildings in accordance with the Manitoba Building Code be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I just have one, uh, one question in regards to the amount that was uh, being increased to the twenty thousand um, dollars, can that? Uh, the question regarding that is when we put in twenty thousand dollars into a home or uh, a structure, wouldn't that twenty thousand dollars of cost yield a significant amount or increase in assessment value? And without reporting that that uh, twenty thousand dollar addition into someone's home or structure, we could be potentially losing out a significant amount of funds at a, in our tax base. Is that fair to say? Um, go ahead. That was a discussion at the Committee of the Whole meeting and just as to where to set that level. And it was council's debate as to where to put it as far as uh, what level to raise it to? So we set it at twenty thousand, which is what it was discussed. If you guys want to discuss it more, that's fine. But twenty thousand is what it is now. Five thousand is what it was before. Uh, Councillor Delorier and then Councillor Gray. 
I guess guess just a comment on Deputy Mayor Wintoni's comment. uh, I think we need to keep in mind that this $20,000 limit is only for items that otherwise wouldn't require a permit. Any addition, any change to the structure, anything that's going to add real value would be captured under other clauses in the bylaw. This is only for basically, uh, you know, repainting, uh, you know, changing your uh, windows, uh, you know, things that don't work un- under any of the l- multiple other sections of the bylaw that would require a building permit would capture any of those things that even things like, uh, you know, uh, changing your bathroom. If you, if you're doing plumbing, well, you got to take out a plumbing permit to this. This is, it's a very limited set of circumstances that this change we're making falls under. It's basically things that are, are purely cosmetic in nature that, that, uh, uh, don't fall under other what wouldn't be captured under other other portions councillor gray councillor gloria scoop me <laughs> okay further discussion scooped. all in favor opposed it's carried Number 13, resolve the pursuance of sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Swan Lake Watershed uh, District, Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission, lawsuit and G4 meeting. Moved by Deputy Mayor Lee Tony, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? Can we just um, add one other quick comment on, um, on our... Uh organizational chart or chart yeah okay all in favor oh, Councilor are Gray. we going to talk like with the last are we going to also talk about the new health order and the impact of what we're going to do with the pool we can okay. the health order as well mm-hmm. okay. okay all in favor opposed it's carried we're in camera as all this regular council meeting now be adjourned at 10 16 p.m. Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Gray. Opposed? Oh, carried. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all in We're going straight to opposed? Okay. <laughs> We're in for the night. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.